Hello, everyone. Welcome. So thanks for all for coming out tonight. I uh, hope you're all having a good week so far. So I'm really excited for Amy's talk tonight. Uh, I'm just going to read you a little bit about her. Um, we're going to hear from Amy Chen, and Amy is the Director of Entrepreneurship Programs at NYC Media Lab. NYC Media Lab connects digital media and technology companies with New York City's universities to drive innovation, entrepreneurship, and talent development. Amy runs the Combine, an accelerator program for startups from NYC's university campuses. She oversees programming, the alumni network, the mentor network, and other partnerships. Please welcome Amy Chen. Thank you. Just gonna switch out. So thank you everyone for having me here tonight. It's really an honor. Um, I remember coming to Workbench for the first time back in 2013 and the community has really grown. So thank you Workbench for sponsoring. Same with Enigma and the creative group. Um, I'm really excited to share what I do at NYC Media Lab and how we are working with both UX and data teams across the universities as well as across certain um, media and technology companies here in New York. Um, so I'll start with essentially an introduction of how I got into this space. Um, it starts with actually payphone open data. I started um, actually working under the Bloomberg administration um, in their IT and telecom um, agency, and I was tasked with this project um, regarding reinventing payphones. So I was exposed to what open data is and how actually this is a creative process that the city was going through to reimagine this public infrastructure across the city. Um, so you can see this is just a screenshot of where payphones are and how um, you know accessible they really are. And one of my projects, this was back in 2012-2013, um, um, getting a sense of how people from the data side and from the user experience side could reimagine um, new infrastructure across the city. And um, essentially, we ran a hackathon and a design challenge to inform what the RFP process would be like for the city. Um, now you might notice Link and I see, um, you know, kiosks all around the city. It was just my um, introduction to what a public-private partnership could be. Um, how does the city, you know, support the technology ecosystem here in New York? Um, just getting a sense of why um, this type of infrastructure would be bringing together so many different disciplines um, to deliver something that's actually useful to people. So even if you are not using it to to um, call someone, what else would you might you use the payphone for? Maybe Wi-Fi, maybe other services. Um, so that was honestly my introduction to what the technology, um, data, and design ecosystem is here in New York. Um, and I've been at NYC Media Lab for the past four years, continuing to grow what the community is here, um, focusing really on the university community because this is um, what our consortium is. So I wanted to just highlight, you know what um different universities are part of our network. We were born out of this project of the Economic Development Corporation, and the anchor institutions are NYU and Columbia, so it's particularly their data science and engineering programs. And then across the city, we also work with des the design campuses at the New School, at Pratt, and the School of Visual Arts. Um, I'm curious, just here in the audience, if anybody is an alum of one of these programs, um, or maybe teaching, or collaborating with um, these programs in any way way. Um, these really are fantastic local institutions here. The talent is really, really stellar. And I'll go into a few examples of how we've worked with universities and why, you know, having this belief and this vision for open innovation across different sectors and disciplines really furthers um, innovation in, in media and, and UX. Um, so just so you have an idea of the different corporate partners that support NYC Media Lab, they really range across um, the, the media spectrum. So it's publishers, it's broadcasters, it's telcos, um, it's folks in venture and strategy and R&D, people who are considering new technologies for media, for information delivery, for understanding you know, what is around you. Um, and these are the corporate members that are supporting what we do at NYC Media Lab, and that's primarily prototyping projects as well as an entrepreneurship program, which is an accelerator. 
So I'll highlight a few of the themes that um, we focus on at the Media Lab. Um, this first theme is media is environmental. It's coming off of you know the screens that are in your pocket and the screens that you you watch. Um, it's going into you know different interfaces like VR, AR, and voice and brain computer interfaces. Um, the way that you will consume media, um, the way that you will you know get media distributed to you or targeted to you through new interfaces. This is this you know what is underlying in this idea that media is environmental. Um, and then this other theme is media is data. So um, the way that companies are you know using data to create new media, um, getting computers to watch video, to create new video, um, to extract metadata out of it, to then distribute it to you in new ways. Um, you know this just goes hand in hand with media and is environmental with the way that we might use you know a voice assistant or something of, of that nature. Um, we're also, of course, very interested in user behavior. How are people, you know, getting a sense of, you know, these new media experiences? Um, and then, of course, the economics of, um, of media. So how is it becoming, um, you know, cheaper to produce content and distribute content? And um, what are these, these new business models around um, these, these new mediums? Um, so here is this time for experimentation. There's a lot of open source tools out there. There are a lot of new, um, you know, just technologies that are very accessible to folks across the universities. Um, we, we know that people are choosing to come to graduate school here in New York to work in the media industry and really get a sense of what's cutting edge. So we really choose to work with um, you know, many of the faculty and graduate students across the campuses and bring them into this community of practice with executives from our member companies, for example. So um, it's you know, technologists, it's head of products, it's um, folks in strategy and venture who want to be informed about how universities are um, really, I think, cultivating this next generation of talent um, to really be um, focused on what these new uh, experiences are for media. Um, and through this community of practice, we're really supporting a number of um, projects across the city. So I can share that um, at NYC Media Lab, we're always you know, hosting different projects at our member companies or at the universities um, in our network. Uh, that's where the prototyping actually happens. Um, um, and it's really amazing what's, what's across the city. I mean, the labs and the raw spaces, the design studios, you know, the, the collaboration that happens across disciplines, um, it's, it's really just amazing um, how accessible it is to um, people to be, it's, it's on view, it's accessible for people to go visit um, and to get a sense of, you know, who's there, you know, in these labs and in these studios. Um, so just to highlight, these are, you know, the, the areas that we focus on in our projects. Um, so we might begin a project um, with paper prototyping, then move on to digital prototyping um, and user testing, and then at the end, really focus on a showcase, a, a demonstration of, of the technology. And I mentioned, for example, VR and AR are key areas for us um, to focus on. And one example I wanted to bring up is a project we did with Bloomberg, actually. Um, and this was focused on enterprise augmented reality. So in the workplace, um, how could you imagine one day um, that your Bloomberg terminal could be on another surface? Um, how could you still access um, your information and your data and you know what you're using um, normally in a terminal on another surface? So in this case, we actually worked with a startup partner called Lampix, and they had this hardware prototype, which is actually a lamp focused on projection augmented reality. And essentially, we worked with them to um, bring in graduate students who are creative technologists and, and data scientists to develop use cases for how would you use um, augmented reality in the workplace, um, you know, in a world that, you know, the screen of your Bloomberg terminal could be anywhere. Um, so this is an example of time series analysis on a table top setting with um, essentially that cube being the, um, the object that is um, 
showing the user how the, the graph of the time series analysis is progressing through, through time. Um, and I wanted to just share how we do these projects and what's involved with them. So in this case, we were working with the head of data science. Um, he came to us with a couple data scientists who were working on new technologies for extracting data out of PDFs and trying to imagine what are new interfaces for us to view and interact with this type of data. Um, so it really was beginning with augmented reality as a technology to explore, figuring out what is accessible about augmented reality. In this case, it was with the startup partner called Lampix to bring the prototyping capability to, to the table. Um, and then it really was a partnership to work together to select the talent from the universities to figure out who is interested in um, imagining this new use case of data visualizations, of interacting with your colleagues um, around charts and graphs and um, tabular data and text that's extracted out of PDFs, um, but in a new way. So that was the way that we you know, put out a call to our university partners um, and selected essentially five different uh, graduate fellows to work on um, this, this project together with Bloomberg UX and data teams. Um, so it was folks who already do um, UX design and development for the terminal. It was folks from the data science side who are designing, you know, or creating new deep learning algorithms to extract, you know, new information to put into the terminal. Um, so it really was a collaborative experience to put together um, to, in the end, showcase what's possible with this technology. This was done in six weeks, and the goal of the final demo day was really to showcase um, what, you know, is possible and how can something be done with a very tight and constrained um, brief to allow for, um, you know, just this exploration, this, um, this I guess, wonder of, of what augmented reality could do for you internally and for, for your customer and your user. Um, so this is an example of um, how this uh, graduate student used the augmented reality tabletop uh, surface to touch and to, um, you know, figure out what types of gestures and what types of lingering on the, um, you know, tabletop might then go on to the next, um, I guess the next piece of, of the visualization or the next um, process in, in the visualization. Um, this example was focusing on pivot tables and how you might use um, certain pieces of hardware, these sliders and gliders, um, to you know, move data around um, with another user um, to visualize and interact with certain data points. So you can imagine you know, this technology is something that um, is accessible and essentially it's a prototype in it of itself. Um, Lampix devices um, you know, aren't sold everywhere yet. Um, so it was a way to experiment in a short amount of time um, with a, you know, t a limited budget and really the point was to bring in external ideas into an internal innovation process. Um, here's another example I wanted to just bring up. Besides doing these uh, working groups where we bring in uh, graduate students to work with executives, we might hold shorter events called hackathons or design jams to really produce a volume of ideas over a weekend or another, you know, time frame. And in this case, Audible came to us and um, indicated they wanted to test what their API and their content library um, would be like for the future of personalized um, audio, you know, content, um, and you know, it was it was an event where we brought together designers, developers, data scientists, not just from the university network, but beyond. So here in New York City, we we held this hackathon in conjunction with these uh, data and UX teams and engineering teams at Audible to figure out, you know, what is the future of listening? Um, how are different ways that users might imagine these personalized audio experiences? Um, you know, in the future. 
Another example, we're working with uh, Verizon on a Connected Futures Challenge. Um, this has been an ongoing partnership to really expose um, you know, our university network to the different technologies that Verizon um, has made possible through, for example, 5G wireless and other technologies that um, you know, they have teams working on. So in this case, this is an AR kit project um, focusing on making music and a jam session um, based on the color schemes on the table, like you're able to tap and interact with um, how you can hear um, colors or hear you know, a ball that's in virtual space drop, um, but not actually drop onto the table. So it's really only dropping in the, in the virtual space. Um, so you know, just these are just different examples of how companies are coming to us to explore these technologies and get a sense of, you know, as these um, graduate students and, and faculty across the city have been focusing on these technologies for, for years, who's interested in, in working with, with large companies to really prototype and accelerate, you know, what's possible and what could, what could you show as a use case? Um, and then I'll explain actually beyond, um, you know, bringing these teams together, these university uh, graduate students, faculty members, and, and executives, we manage this process for scoping and figuring out um, how is it that the goal for these projects is really to learn on both sides. Um, this goes back to what I said about this community of practice, um, really being part of something here in New York where you as a graduate student are basically on this the same neutral space um, as an executive who's building out you know some type of team or some type of idea or product or um, really focusing on this future of, of these emerging technologies in um, existing businesses so this is kind of this takeaway that um, I wanted to highlight about our rapid prototyping program Moving on to our startup accelerator, we saw that actually a few of our prototypes um, wanted to extend what they were doing in terms of finding um, sustainability for, for development and finding a you know, potentially user group or customer segment. So we actually saw that creating an accelerator was our next step um, to engage folks in our corporate network as well as from the university um, ecosystem. We saw that a number of teams from the universities were interested in what we're offering in this community of practice, um, but they weren't, you know, participating in the prototyping projects. Is honestly, it is a small group that is um, that might be selected for for a prototyping project. So the combine is a wide open um, net for any university faculty or student to apply in and um, essentially advance their entrepreneurial idea with us. We offer a 12-week program focused on um, the lean methodology, and you know this is the business model canvas that really is focused on um, customer interviews, understanding who's your customer and who's your user, getting a sense of how you might build your minimum viable product based on these interviews that you do over 12 weeks. Um, and we are continuously focusing on you know what are these hypotheses that you have about what your value proposition is and who your customer segment is and how all these other parts of the canvas really fit into how you will be able to sustain what you are developing and what you're building. Um, we've had essentially three classes of the combine so far, and um, you know we're continuing to, to run this program to really invite um, university entrepreneurs to be part of our network. And while they're part of our NYC Media Lab program, they have access to our corporate uh, mentors and others in our community community who want to see you know, early stage startups succeed um, here in New York, particularly around these emerging technology areas. Um, so I'll give a couple examples actually of a few startups that have come through our accelerator program and who are you know, continuing on with their startup. Um, one is a company called VidRover. This is a team of two uh, PhD students from the Digital Video Multimedia Lab at Columbia. And they focus on machine learning in video and search in video. Um, essentially, their product is something that they were working on for 
I would say about around four years as PhD students, but they weren't necessarily sure that this was a product um, that could fit in the market. They knew they were onto something with what they were doing with metadata extraction and automatic um, search, but um, you know, through the Combine program, they, I think, found an, or they gained an understanding of what customers are actually out there, and they were able to build what they um, you know, eventually have as their product um, for their customers and for their users. Um, so these are engineers who, you know, are very much focused on computer vision and machine learning and, and you know, understanding video and archives of video, um, and they weren't necessarily sure that the UX and design side um, was something that would be so core to how they would, like, launch their product, um, but they really have taken in so many insights, and it's been amazing to, to watch their journey. Um, so for example, after um, they graduated from our accelerator, they went on to Techstars and um, went on to the RGA Verizon Media Tech Mentor Studio. They've gone through a couple um, other accelerators and now they're working with Samsung Next here in New York. Um, they really built this new product that they have um, with you know a user in mind, understanding how a video editor might use a, a search um, system internally at a media company to find video that they might not know is actually already in their archive and ready to you know um, publish or put into a piece. Um, so this is just um, an example of how they are you know applying technology that is state of the art, coming from their research you know at the lab, getting a sense of how to build and iterate for their user. Um, and yeah, I think it's just something that we're always trying to consider. How do we match um, technology area, talent, and um, the right fit in the industry? This is this program that we have, this accelerator that's um, really trying to build this community and um, this pipeline, really, from the university to, to market. Um, so this is just essentially this demo that shows um, what their uh, capability is for you know, search and filter and really getting the, the, what you want out of an archive internally um, at a media company. So let me just uh, clarify a few other points. Um, you know, I mentioned this business model canvas curriculum based on customer interviews and hypotheses and insights that you're extracting from these interviews. Um, this is this, I think, program that, um, you know, first time entrepreneurs might not have a sense of before they come into the program. So um, this is what we teach, and it's very much an open source curriculum. Um, many of you might have heard of Steve Blank and, and this methodology. It's something that you know we have seen um, really I think pulls entrepreneurs, um, pulls the entrepreneurship spirit out of you know the scientists and designers and um, different people who are working with from the universities. It really empowers them to to build something that's sustainable. Um, this is just another example of a startup that has come out of our accelerator. They're called GeoPipe, um, and they came out of NYU and Brown, um, coming from PhD backgrounds, looking at distributed systems and um, essentially algorithms to automatically generate real worlds of um, the cities uh, that we live in. Um, so essentially, if you were to take different types of open data and other data that you might have about cities, how can you put it into an algorithm, have a geopipe ingest it, and then automatically produce something that is very realistic, um, rendered in a way that um, might take someone hours, weeks to do. Um, you know, it just is part of the workflow process that they um, discovered as they were going through their uh, entrepreneurial journey of customer discovery, understanding who is their user. Is it someone you know in an architecture firm who is creating 3D models for, for weeks? Um, how do they get a sense of how this type of um, technology would fit into a workflow? Um, this is essentially what they learned through, through our curriculum. 
So just to highlight, you know, this short time frame, our curriculum runs for about 12 weeks. Um, we are working primarily with university faculty and students, telling them to get out of their building, out of their lab, out of their studio, because if they continue to talk to each other in their lab or studio, they're not going to find the answers of what is, what are the pain points in the market or what are the workflows of, of their potential users. Um, and we're really telling them that this is a practice of evidence-based entrepreneurship. So so as you are, you know, continuing to um, create new hypotheses and test new hypotheses, how are you actually finding these answers to these questions that you have about what's viable for what you're developing in your MVP? Um, I wanted to share just overall takeaways um, from my time at the Media Lab. I've seen, you know, many different corporations and other, you know, organizations build a community of practice around, you know, VR, AR, around AI and media, around, you know, applications of, you know, voice technology, for example, all these different emerging media technologies. Um, we see that working with universities is one way to really learn something new and um, just get a sense of what's fresh and what's um, coming out of these campuses, these, um, these networks that are very local. Um, and then we always say it's very possible to prototype for a brief amount of time and to do it with an inexpensive budget. Um, so we say this is a way to you know, build your innovation practice. So I wanted to also share university resources so you can all, you know, walk away with an understanding of what the campus, uh, you know, map really looks like across the city. Um, I really had the privilege to get to know so many faculty members and um, staff working at these types of institutes and programs and, and studios and labs. Um, so I wanted to list a few of the really great, you know, UX focused and data focused programs here in New York. Um, so at Columbia University, University, the Data Science Institute is this interdisciplinary um, institute across many different schools at Columbia, including architecture and engineering and business. Um, so it's they have a great data science day every year where it's open lab and many you know keynotes and talks. Um, the Brown Institute is focused on um, computer science and journalism as well as digital um, journalism. Um, also at CUNY, there are a couple of programs that we're close with, um, primarily at the Graduate Center. Um, focused on their master's level and, and PhD programs in digital humanities. Um, and they have an interactive journalism program which includes data visualization at the journalism school. Um, at NYU, a number of programs, um, particularly at Tisch, at their art school, um, the ITP program, uh, they focus on, you know, UX design as well as, you know, arts and technology. Um, it's, it's a really uh, well-known program here in the city. Digital media, integrated digital media is at the engineering school at Tandon. Um, and the Center for Data Science is a interdisciplinary um, institute across the different schools at NYU. At the new school, um, which is really right down the street, um, we are very close with the design and technology program at Parsons um, and the data visualization at Parsons. Um, we've seen just phenomenal talent come from, from those programs, really focused on different uh, collaborations with, with industry partners while they're in, in school, actually. Um, at Pratt Institute, there are a few programs that we have done collaborations with, communications design, digital arts, and information experience design. I'd say the information experience design is almost, um, they were born out of a more traditional uh, information architecture um, curriculum, but we, we know that they um, have done stellar work, um, you know, beyond, beyond just straight information architecture. And the School of Visual Arts is a much more boutique program, I would say. The interaction design program is one that we have a history of working with. Um, really great UX uh, designers come out of that program. And then I would love to just extend an invitation to certain events that we have coming up at NYC Media Lab. Like I said, we are this you know, open community and um, ecosystem here in New York. Um, we are hosting the Fake News Horror Show this Thursday and Friday. This is at our campus in downtown Brooklyn. This will focus on um, the technologies that are affecting um, you know, misinformation and, and propaganda. Um, so you'll get to learn from 
you know, faculty researchers as well as, as others who are you know, very much um, questioning what's, what's going on in this space. And then we have our annual summit in September. It'll actually be at the New School as well as NYU. This is an opportunity to see a full range of demonstrations from the different graduate programs. Um, we always invite you know, top students and faculty to demo their research, their prototypes, their startups at our event. So think of it as a giant media and technology science fair. Um, that day we also have a number of panels and talks and workshops. Um, I would be happy to you know, extend the invitation to you with um, to this event it's an annual event um, and then I also want to mention I don't know who's uh, had the opportunity to go to the Brooklyn Navy Yard yet, um, but you are definitely all invited to this new center that will be opening. Um, we were selected by the city to operate this new VR AR center um, focused on you know these technologies, not just in media and entertainment, but also in other sectors um, like health and transportation, real estate. We'll be exploring how VR AR will really um, have an impact on these sectors through startup formation programs, corporate innovation programs, but also outreach and education programs. Um, so keep an eye out for news on this new center that's coming. And I'd really love to you know, say thank you to you all for being here tonight and, and getting a sense of what I do at NYC Media Lab. Um, I would love to you know, take any questions. I really appreciate um, the opportunity to share our work. <laughs> So please wait for the microphone before you ask your question. What's the best way to reach out to these universities sure. uh, for uh, some kind of research program? Yeah, I know a number of the universities have capstone projects or collaboration opportunities with specific companies or other challenge projects. Um, so if there's one in particular that you would maybe like an introduction to, um, that's something I would be happy to help with. But otherwise, I would say going to the open events at these campuses is a great way to just get a sense of who you might work with, whether that's students or faculty. Um, and these events are you know, very public, listed on their you know, public calendars on their websites. There are ways that you can go visit a thesis show or a works in progress show show um, both at the labs and the design studios. Hmm. Any other questions? Uh, in your experiments with um, VR in visualizing data, mm -hmm. have you come up uh, across any good ideas or themes for, in terms of what three um, VR is good for when it comes to data? What are the advantages of VR? Yeah, I would say it's the immersive aspect. Um, so we've seen, for example, even a use case from the Wall Street Journal of how you might ride the wave of the NASDAQ. Um, that's an experience that you might not necessarily have if you're just reading about what you know the stock prices are of the NASDAQ. So we know, for example, the VR creator who's like on staff at the Wall Street Journal who's thinking about how can you know the Wall Street Journal readers consider a new way to interact and be informed about um, the stocks that they are invested in. Um, that's one example. Another might be in sports. So we know for the fan experience, many fans might put on VR goggles to just get a better sense of the stats around the athletes that they're really big fans of or the teams that they're really big fans of. And there are ways to imagine how an athlete is tracking his or her own stats or how a team has progressed throughout a season. Um, we know these certain experiences that are even produced by the leagues themselves or um, other independent creators or organizations who want to make this data more accessible and essentially interactive. And I would say when these experiences are multi-user, so when you are in the same virtual environment, um, whether that's in virtual reality or augmented reality, and you're interacting with the data like two people or more people um, at once, it just feels so different because you might, you might still feel your feet on the ground or you might still be sitting in a chair, um, but you're experiencing data in a virtual space in a more immersed way. So I would say that's um, the differentiator for this type of technology in, in those types of use cases. 
We've also seen applications in enterprise. So for example, um, how doctors might use um, a HoloLens in the operating room to get a sense of the medical data or the procedures that's going on around you know, the human body that they're operating on. So data visualization of the 3D body and how it's such a complex um, you know, system, um, that's just another use case that we absolutely have supported you know, prototype development on and um, essentially collaborated with certain startups that are working in this space. Sure. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So as a recently graduate student, mm -hmm. so if we have like projects we want to continue, do you have supports or what should I do? How yeah. to find like, because I'm UX designer, but I don't know anything about technical. I, I don't know how to develop it. Right. So, so especially if you're developing in VR, AR, our new center will have resources available for folks like you, whether you are interested in starting a startup around the space or um, maybe applying for a prototype grant to continue developing in this space. Um, our center will have opportunities like that, perhaps through our own um, organization or through partner organizations. Um, so I would say, you know, please keep a lookout on our newsletter because you know, grant opportunities are definitely available um, for people like you. Mm -hmm. I would say the other areas through like hackathons or design jams that we have um, might be through our corporate members or other partners that we work with. Um, many of those are more open because we want to produce a volume of ideas and a volume of use cases. And those events would definitely be advertised in our newsletter. Uh, I was just wondering if you can tell us like what are the biggest obstacles you've encountered when prototyping with VR and AR uh, because of the technology, because of it being, I guess, still being very young yeah. compared to like web or, or an app. Absolutely. Um, so a couple of the projects that we've done recently in this past fall semester and spring semester have related to storytelling in, in AR, for example. Um, so the technology might not be there yet to render something fully in real time, or the technology might be not might be available yet to um, get a sense of how a user is going to go through certain stages of an AR experience um, at the right location, if it's a location-based experience. So we definitely have seen these challenges for how to create in the medium as the medium is being created you know, in, in real time. Um, I would say it's through the, the uh, people who we are bringing together, whether that's from the um, university, so the students, or from the um, corporate side, so the executives who are working on, like, there's this community of practice of wanting to learn from, you know, how are people testing, how are people um, showing what works and what doesn't, what's possible in a certain time frame. So you can imagine even in six weeks, we might um, have someone want to propose a project that actually might take a longer time frame. Um, and I think people are just continuously learning along the way, like what um, is, is possible as this technology is, is still being developed. Um, but of course, there are many, cases where um, you know something goes wrong and um, you're not able to show what your use cases really is and there are ways to fake it and that's part of prototyping showing this Wizard of Oz type of um, you know video for example um, and honestly at that point because this technology is so young that could be good enough for just demonstrating what's possible and who might be involved um, so we always say if you fail that's that's totally fine because you're learning from what's possible Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you own your own databases for different industries? Because for those data-driven uh, startup projects, actually at the very beginning, they don't have any um, data point generated huh. from, from the market. So, and, 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 and in their research stage, they really need that um, um, data to do their, for, for example, customer segmentation or something. So. Yeah, good question. Um, as our teams are coming through our accelerator and 
figuring out you know, how they might determine their customer segments, we honestly don't give them anything. We give them this curriculum of how to do the interviews and what they should you know, observe and try to extract as insights from who they're talking with and how they can recognize patterns of the conversations that they're having. But we're not necessarily giving them market research or data to begin with as they start our program with us. I would say many of them are learning about these markets along the way as they're going through our accelerator program. Um, they're so new to entrepreneurship as it is. Um, they might have always dreamed about becoming an entrepreneur, but might not actually understand how to fit in the market. Um, so it's a good question to just get a sense of, are we giving them essentially preparation before they go out and interview their customers or users? But we actually don't. We're, we're just giving them, this is how you conduct the interview. This is how you find who is the right person to talk with. This is how you'll actually realize you're talking with the right type of person. Um, you'll essentially get closer and closer to what you think is right for building what your minimum viable product is. As you hear, you know, someone will potentially pay you for what you're building. Um, and so that's you know, this type of uh, pattern recognition that we have seen that our startups have, have taken. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Going once, mm -hmm. twice. All right, thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also want to mention, Amy has a great newsletter if you're not already <laughs> subscribed. Um, how can people subscribe? Oh, it comes out every Saturday. Um, and if you just go to nycmedialab.org under newsletters, I write the data newsletter every week. And uh, my boss writes the BRAR one, so you have your pick. <laughs> great, thank you. Uh, so for those of you who were here on our May 1st event, um, that was the kickoff of a spin-off of the UX and Data Meetup. Uh, Matt, do you want to talk about the next event that's coming up? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So, um, so we started this meetup about four and a half years ago, and it's been going great, but it's time to create a new sibling meetup. The new meetup is called Data and the Greater Good. In this meetup, we'll look at themes such as uh, how can uh, how can we look at how data works with humanitarian needs like uh, healthcare or, uh, or social justice or government, uh, but also look at the arts and other things that uh, affect the, the, uh, us as people. Um, for the first meetup, I guess it'd be the second one, yeah, the, the first official separate meetup is gonna be uh, June 20th, and our speakers uh, will be the Chief Experience Officer from the Cooper Hewitt Museum. So I think, that'll be, I think that one will be interesting to this group. Uh, and we'll also have the uh, head of analytics from the Met. So I think it'll be a great event. It'll be here, uh, 7 p.m. on June 20th. So hope to see you there. Oh, it, it'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I just want to mention a couple of events that we have coming up next month. Uh, July 9th, we will be uh, at the creative group space that's at Grand, near Grand Central. And we're gonna hear from Dale Kim. He's a machine learning researcher and he's also a former data scientist uh, who was at the New York Times, my former colleague there. Uh, he's the founder of a new startup called AI.Reverie and he's gonna be talking about augmenting data sets with synthetic data. And then we're gonna be back here at Workbench on July 24th uh, with Sagar Mohi talking about data visualization in UIs and sci-fi games. Um, so thank you so much for coming, and thank you to our volunteers who signed you in tonight. Uh, you can have whatever is left of soda and pizza and meet some new people. And have a good night. We'll see you thank next time. You. Thank you.